everyone, it's Maggie Bot, and uh, this vlog will be kind of two-parter. So um, first, I'm going to talk to you about Gen Con a little bit, because there's some stuff I need some help with, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about what's going on other than that. Uh, so this year, 2017, will be my third Gen Con. I went in 2014, and then last year in 2016. 2014 was halfway paid by work, halfway paid by me. We weren't staying at the convention center. We were staying, like, way the heck out. Uh, it's kind of a dumpster fire. <laughs> so uh, last year I went on my own. I got a press badge and I did some interviews and I did some footage using all new equipment and not all of the footage was super usable but I did have a nice time. I made some contacts, I did some schmoozing, uh, I met up with some friends and I helped out with a couple of charity events that ended up being things I could repeat over time. The DFW charity night that they do is super fun and it's run by friends of mine so I will definitely be back next year or this year. <laughs> but because it's my third year uh, this year I would like a chance to apply for the Industry Insider Program, which is what they do. They pick like, I want to say it's only like 50 people who work somewhere in the gaming industry and they set up this little mini con within the con and it's um, presenting on panels, helping present on other people's panels, and then attending a certain number of panels and or workshops. And so in order to apply for that, I actually have to present or come up with my own panel ideas that other people could jump into. So <laughs> this is where you come in. By the time you watch this video I will probably already have applied um, so whether I get in or not is probably up to the fates but I could still super super use your help because I need some people to bounce ideas off of. So please watching this video, if you have ideas, if you have opinions, negative or positive, put them down in the comments below. And if you don't feel comfortable having a public conversation about that, and we don't have Facebook Messenger or Twitter DM, you can email me. It's maggie at maggiebot.com, M-A-G-G-I at M-A-G-G-I-B-O-T dot com. So I highly encourage you to do a public comment as long as you're not super rude. My community is awesome and they have really cool discussions. So um, adding your voice into that could only make it better. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, so I have two panel ideas and a workshop idea. And the workshop idea is the one I need the most help with. Uh, so panel number one, I would like to speak about the relationship and the potential relationship between Kickstarter and retail. Because right now... Kickstarter and retail do not get along. Retailers think that Kickstarter does all of their pre-sales and take all their customers and they don't see any benefit. Kickstarter hasn't quite got down how the retail supply chain works and so they they come out of nowhere offering you these really weird deals that you can't really afford or take because your payment model of a Kickstarter is that you pay now and then 13 months or some random amount of months later you might get your games but you can't really schedule them. Retail doesn't work that way. That's not how budgets work. So I think there's huge potentiality for good symbiotic relationship between the two but I think we need some greater minds speaking about it and coming up with plans and then presenting them to people who do Kickstarters because there are so many retailers that it's almost harder to reach all of them without going to something like Gamma or, you know, a big retail show. But if you can get the Kickstarter folks to present great ideas and build those relationships, that's even better. Because Kickstarter tends to be a model for companies and they use it over and over. So you get an established relationship with those companies. Like, I have a relationship with Jamie Stegmeier from Stonemaier Games because he's been doing the Kickstarter thing for so long that he eventually figured out how to interact with retailers in a way that made sense for them. He's kind of got the, the top-notch strategy on that right now. T Tasty Minstrel eventually came along to understand a little bit more about how brick-and-mortar hobby retail worked. Um, another company that does a really good job in that particular sense is Eagle Griffin, where as a retailer I put down a deposit, but I don't pay for the goods until they're shipping, just like every other good. So there's that whole thing I think that could be a really interesting panel, and it could involve both folks that do Kickstarter, folks that do retail, 
and or maybe even just consumers and people that have that outside perspective because as a Kickstarter model you need to make sure your perception is just as good as your product because there is such a quick uh, quick version of anger that comes up from these things and people are really really antsy about Kickstarter because their money is invested and so they are invested and then they get to tell you what they think. <laughs> uh, so I think that's panel one. Uh, panel two I would like to do um, inclusivity and diversity community training. I think it would be a really good idea to do a panel with somewhat of an inclusive and diverse panel about communities and language perception, expectations, and using empathy in situations. When you hear something or you see something that doesn't align with your values, that's not harmful and not violent, how do you approach that and actually build a bridge to that person and make sure they feel included as well? I'm not talking about the angry angries or the icky people that are throwing epithets. I'm just talking about like casual ignorance. How do you step in and change people's minds and perceptions of how they're harming others and bring them into the inclusive fold and not make them feel dumb or yelled at, I guess. That might be too soft for some, but that's my approach. I love empathy. <laughs> so I think that's panel number two. Here's the big one, the workshop. So what I would like to do is workshop a rating system for games of how accessible they are based on a couple of parameters and the number one being colorblindness and there are some more common kinds of colorblind perception and we could give a rating to published games and say this is not okay if you can't distinguish between red and green or you can give a rating for published games. You can also give a list of resources to game publishers like um, filters for Photoshop where they can put a filter over their file and see what that might look like to someone who can't distinguish between certain tones. It's so easy and available. It's available for everyone but how many Kickstarters get around to doing that because Games get published every year. I'm selling one right now to a friend of mine that if you can't distinguish between red and green, you can't play the game. And it's 2017. <laughs> These things, they need to stop. Um, there's also memory elements of games. There's dexterity elements, not just um, literally stacking things, but holding cards in your hand for a length of time. Being able to do that and put, pick cards out and do other things without some sort of holder. Um, there are resources like card holders that make sense and might start becoming interesting add-ons or stretch goals. Um, if I can go into different problems and give solutions, I think that could be a really interesting workshop. So what I'd like to do is talk to people about a rating system, what problems they could see in the environment and ways of solving those problems both for established games and for games that are being printed. Is this too big? Is this too much of an idea for just one workshop? Do I need to slim it down to just focus on colorblind issues? I think there's a lot of meat there and I don't think I've quite finessed it or the language or quite gotten the idea perfect yet. So this is really where I need your help. So I'm going to have to pitch this workshop probably before you see this video. So that means that my language is just going to be submitted already. But that doesn't mean I can't make it amazing in case I do get selected for this industry and decider. And what I will say for this video and in perpetuity is that if I don't get selected for this industry insider program, what I will do if we have some discussion, if we have some participation, is I will turn this into another video and it will be a little more in depth of a video because I don't want your good ideas to go to waste. I do think I have a lot to say on the subject because I think if I knew before I spent $60 on a game that my best friend, my wife, my husband couldn't play it, I might consider otherwise. And if 
a certain company came up with the same issues over and over, I might be able to email them, letting them know, hey, did you know about this filter? Did you know about this? Can you put trays in your games? Can you do this? Because those companies want your money. They want as many people as possible to be able to play their games, and they want to do it on the cheap. So if we can give people the resources they need, then we're empowering them to make more games for more people, right? Sorry, I'm rambling, but this is the this is this is the basis of my whole day. My whole brain's been on fire about this all day. Um, so that's that's Gen Con. If you have anything about um, these ideas, any feedback, or anything you'd like to say about that, please leave them down below or at my email. It's Maggie at MaggieBot. Um, you can DM me on Twitter or put it on Facebook Messenger. I will try and check all of those as much as I can. And the second half of this video is just going to be a little more chatting about some upcoming stuff for me, but that was really the meat of it, the Gen Con ideas. Um, so it is March 1st in about an hour, and I am really excited. I go into kind of crunch time for what I do every May, which is called The Gauntlet. And The Gauntlet is a charity tournament that myself and my work puts on, which is huge. It's 20 companies, four people per company show up on this one day, and we do a marathon of games. Prior to that marathon, they have 40 days to raise money for a cause this year, being um, Treehouse, which is uh, helps foster youth out here in Seattle, Washington, which is really interesting and cool idea. Um, so that turns into kind of a part-time job for me for the next like month and a half. We do game selection, which also means training up all my judges, then teaching those games to all of the teams, procuring the games, making a scoring system for them. Because like I said, it's a tournament and you have a winner and there's always a huge theme and so I have to get dressed up. Uh, so that's, that's all of the next two months for me is basically working on the gauntlet while doing my day job. Um, it, turns really fun, but I turn into a pile of mush. Um, and a couple weeks after the gauntlet, it looks like I might be trying to go to Origins. Um, I am officially saving my pennies, and I'm going to be selling off some games in hopes to make up the $500 airfare. Ooh, $500 to get to Columbus, Ohio. Who knew? Uh, so that's next on the docket. Um, I will be helping a friend of mine do an event out there, which is pretty exciting. Um, but that would be my first trip to Origins as well. I don't know that I will be able to make it for all five days, but definitely four, if not three. <laughs> but doesn't make the airfare any cheaper. Uh, but I, I, I didn't think I was going, but they would really like me to come out and help with this thing, and it's a cause I believe in, so uh, we will see. And that's pretty much it for me. What have you all been up to? I've been playing, uh, I played a game of Anachrony the other night, and I'm playing a lot of Feast for Odin. I also put up a Feast for Odin uh, review, if you didn't see it. Um, pretty well, pretty well love the game. think the worker placement is less tense than you're used to in a lot of worker placement games, and a lot of people find the puzzle element to be kind of separate from the worker placement. So those are the kind of two downsides, but I found it to be really fun and fascinating. It's a big old game with lots and lots of strategies, so it's kind of fun to explore. And tomorrow I should be playing Feast and um, relearning Twa, because I played that once back in the day and it's back out in print now and I'd really like to play it again because that art can't deny that art and I like dice placement so uh, that is my plan for tomorrow uh, I hope you all are well and I'll see you next time bye